Good morning, Pat Ziemer here with MagnaWave. Welcome to this Tuesday morning edition of MagnaWave Office Hours. As you know, we come together every Tuesday morning uh, at this time to answer your questions, uh, talk with you on the phone about questions you may have or concerns that you have about various uh, situations. So if you have questions about machines, training, um, business, whatever it may be, please feel free to uh, post those questions here in the chat box uh, on Facebook or you can give me a call at 502-599-9722. Don't call, send me a text. 502-599-9722, then I will call you back. Uh, that way we can control the, in, the uh, incoming calls so I don't have several people trying to call in at the same time. Uh, if you'll give me a call, if you have something you want to discuss, then we'll get you some uh, MagnaWave gear because uh, it's always fun having a, good, a discussion because we can go deeper into the detail that you may be looking for at that time. So again, uh, 502-599-9722, send me a text with your name and uh, I'll get right back to you or post your question here in the chat box. There have been some questions that have been asked over the week that I can uh, I can go over. One of them was, came up yesterday and it's a common question that we quite often receive is what causes the muscle movement or the twitching uh, when a treatment is being administered? Uh, what causes that? Is it okay? Okay to have that, so on and so forth. Well, the answer is the as you move the coil over the body, whether that's a person, a small animal, or large animal, it's more apparent uh, when you do it when it's done on a horse. You can see it. You can readily see the twitching on a small animal. Uh, it's it, it because of the size. You don't see it as much. Or on a person, uh, if you're doing someone's back, you can see it or something. Or if you put it on their shoulder, you can see movement of the of the shoulder or the muscle uh, type of thing when you are uh, applying a treatment so with that said basically what happens is uh, the devices work on the same principle uh, as an MRI. They send a signal down into the area, the molecules are stimulated, and on, on an MRI picture, it's a continual signal, and then it sends back what looks like a picture on the screen, and then they can see what's going on in the area. With this, the signal goes down, stimulates the molecules, and if there is sensitivity or there is uh, poor blood movement in the area where you have a lot of dormant blood cells and so forth, it, it's discombobulated and it sends back a reverberation. So that reverberation will look like a muscle twitch or will look like uh, a, a muscle movement. So when you're dealing with that, it, it's you can do one or two things. You can put the, de the device at a setting. Now I'm talking specifically about a horse where you can see it, but it's the same on any body, whether it's an animal or a person. You put it on a setting and as you move it over the body, uh, on a shoulder, someone would, oh, I, it's right there, I can feel it. Or they may get a slight movement in their shoulder uh, where you have the, the particular coil located. Same thing if you're doing a larger animal, being a, a, a cow or a horse or whatever it may be. As you move over the hip, if you come to an area where there is some, some sensitivity, you will get the pulsing the pulsing will show. And so that's what we always talk about when we say we're doing a scan. You put the device on a very moderate type of setting and you move it over the body and you look for those areas of sensitivity. That just means there's a, a, a clog in the road, if you will. There's something there causing the blood not to be flowing properly, causing some sensitivity uh, in the muscle area and that's apparent to you and you can see it where the twitching occurs. So what what you would do then is you would maybe turn your machine up a little bit more and then work the area, do some body work on the area to help free up the blood flow, allow the blood to better move out of the area, to move through the body, allow good oxygenated blood to come to the area as it flows through the body that, that the good oxygenated blood, as I often say, can work uh, very good things, can work miracles with good oxygenated blood to an area. Basically, it just allows the body to better heal itself and that's whole another conversation perhaps we can have this morning is just what is going on and what does this device do and how beneficial uh, can it be but so you can it, you can also take the machine and you can you can um, turn it up to where you force if you will or cause a muscle movement and what that is would be is a massage 
So you are a massage type of body work, a body stimulation type of thing to where you take the coil, you turn it to where you put it and their person is feeling it on their shoulder or your larger animal, your horse or whatever it may be, or even your dog, you see a slight pulsing in the body. Well, you are simply pulsing, manipulating those muscles in the body to provide a massage type of effect, a re re relaxing type of situation uh, for the body. Now you're not like a massage therapist will go to specific muscle groups and so on and so forth. With this, you're doing in the entire area of the muscle, so you're stimulating and basically improving the blood flow and the oxygenation to the area. And uh, conversely, or not conversely, but quite often when we talk about it, if someone treats a young person, uh, you don't see any movement because they don't have a lot of soreness. Kids don't, younger people, uh, children don't have a lot of things going on so you can treat them and there's nothing but you take that same coil and put it on your shoulder and you're getting movement. Same thing quite often when you're doing animals, small animals or horses as you, as you move around. If you don't see any movement, that's telling you that things are pretty good. That, that there's not a lot of sensitivity in a particular area. And uh, if there is sensitivity, that's not our job to determine uh, where it's coming from or what it is. That's the veterinarian's job or the doctor's job, whatever the situation may be. All we're doing is setting the body in a position to take on better oxygen to the blood cells, uh, better blood flow through the body to allow for better healing uh, of the body. But to quickly answer that question, if there is movement as you're treating the horse, that is normal, that is not a problem, and as long as the animal or the person is comfortable, and you can quite often tell that in their eyes, uh, if it's too much for them, they won't stay. They will move away. Uh, a horse will move away if it's too much. If you're having movement in the neck or the shoulder or the back or something and you are getting a pulsing but the animal is, is licking and the eyes are serene and everything's fine, then you're good. Uh, so the pulsing is not a problem and it is normal that you see the muscle vacillation, if you will, as you are treating a horse. So that was, that was a, a good question uh, that was posed yesterday and people always, uh, for some reason, even though it covered very much in the training and in the videos, it's there, but people quite often have those questions. It's, it it kind of goes back um, in earlier days when we were starting and people were first getting machines and, and getting out there. One I would often get is, well, uh, I'm, my horse has got a sore, he's sensitive in his neck and he's not turning the way I want him to or he's drooping his head or whatever and so I want to work the area and make him feel better. and uh, but. And, and so it's been working, but gosh, it's all of a sudden not working as well. Well, how come? Well, you know, I get all this movement, so I turn the machine down, and I don't want to. I don't want to hurt them. And I say, go back, put the machine on, treat the neck area. That's what we're talking about. And if you get movement, look at the eye. They, they will tell you in their eye or their ears, or if you're talking about a horse, what's going on. A person will say, oh, that's a lot, turn that down, whatever. So you want comfort is the key, but as long as they're comfortable and they go back and they turn it back up and they get movement in the neck and then the horse's eye would be okay, and all of a sudden, oh, we're getting the same result we got before. The horse will turn. He's not stiff in his neck. He's feeling better. He's more relaxed. That's what we want is a more relaxed area uh, and let the body and, and the improved blood flow work its, work its magic and, and do what it's supposed to do. So that's quite often the key. So if there is movement, it's okay. Uh, if there's too much movement or if you turn it too high, the, the client will not stay with you. They will walk away or they'll say that's uncomfortable or whatever and then you just uh, adjust the device accordingly. Any other questions, uh, please post them in the chat box and I'd be happy to uh, take a look at them for you or if you'd like to send me a text, 502-599-9722 and I will call you back and we can uh, have a discussion about uh, what it is you may um, want to talk about. Okay, I had another question that was asked um, of what about a patient with a rare disease, fibromuscular dysplasia?
Well, what that means is quite often it's where the blood vessels constrict and you don't get enough blood flow into an organ or into an area. And so can we, uh, certainly we, you want to discuss this with a doctor, but can you treat someone with that type of, of issue? Well, if we're going to basically improve the blood flow of the body, make the blood flow smoother and better, if, if you've got a constricted blood vessel and, and, and non-good flowing blood's trying to get through there, wouldn't it make more sense to have it flowing smoothly and better into the area? And so again, with uh, a doctor's understanding of what you're doing and what's going on, there is typically not an issue with helping that type of situation. And as a, as a matter of fact, in my particular case, several years ago, uh, we were in Lexington, Virginia, and I'm thinking, uh, gosh, I'm having something going on here. I'm having problems. Am I having heart problems or, or what's going on? And because uh, I was having some breathing difficulties and so forth and went to the hospital and did a stress test, didn't go the way we wanted it to. And the doc says, man, you've got something going on. You've got a blockage or something. And I'm, you know, I'm getting older. And, and so, you know, the, the activity is different today than it was 15, 20 years ago for me. But uh, I and went to the doctor. Doctor. They said that, did, the, did all the things I described to you. They said, well, we're going to do an uh, angioplast. We're going to go in and find where you got some blockage and, and hopefully just in, you know, enlarge things and do it. Well, they got in there and then no blockage, no problem, except that the uh, uh, blood vessels to the left side uh, of my heart were smaller by about 40% than the blood vessels to the right side, just a thing that I've had all of my life. Uh, as I remember as a child when we do cross-country running, I couldn't do it. I would tire very quickly. Well, they're saying now well, that's why, because you didn't have the right kind of blood flow. wasn't a problem, but you just didn't have enough blood flow to be able to have that long-range uh, type of stamina. So in, 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 so people have that. Mine's more of a natural thing. It's not a, wasn't a disease that causes something to go down. But, but it's very important for me, and I work on it uh, continually now, to have as good of oxygenated, smooth blood flow as I can and and uh, that's just something to that we can talk about in that particular uh, kind of area so uh, that's a personal situation with it but you know always uh, check with your docs and understand what's going on when you deal with these uh, types of situations okay have any questions are there any questions that are up at this point we've got one from okay John Stevens. all right great Someone with lots of painful areas used the machine and thought it helped a bit right after the session. Next day said their pain was worse. I have heard you explain this, but, would, but what's the best way to explain this to a client? <clears throat> what well, great question, John. And quite often there's there's a there's more going on. So you'll someone's got a back issue, let's say, and so you go and you treat their back or they got issues that, like he said in a lot of different areas of their body and you go treat things and they feel better because maybe you've done an overall body type of treatment but the next day now because everything's not going to respond the same way. So the next day, maybe one of the pains that they had but wasn't the primary pain is all of a sudden be, being felt. You, typically the brain recognizes one pain at a time as, as a focus point. And so it's not unusual when I, when I used to treat racing jockeys that I would treat their low back and then tomorrow they'd come back because they weren't talking about their shoulders and tomorrow they'd come back and say, my gosh, what'd you do? My back, my low back's better but my shoulders are killing me now. Well, the shoulders were always hurting them. It was just the low back was hurting more. And so when you do that, you, you, you kind of have to chase the situation in some cases uh, through the body. So where that person is having the issue, you treat that today and tomorrow something else can surface as the primary issue. So over time, you hope to find everything that's going on and treat it all. But if someone has issues in several different spots of their body, it can be a little bit of a challenge because number one, they're gonna keep moving and doing what they're doing. If they carry themselves or if they're, maybe they're overweight or they've got a, uh, um, an issue with a bone deformity or a bone pinch or whatever it may be, that's gonna continue to in, uh, aggravate something, you can make it feel better today and maybe make everything feel better but then tomorrow that one thing that's anatomical can all of a sudden be surfacing and say oh my I don't remember that so that's the key you want to look for 
follow through. And that's another thing that sometimes it's not a one session solves all. I'm not going to say that one session isn't enough in many cases or two, three sessions, but in some cases it just takes a little longer, a little more attention to detail as to what you're dealing with to be able to uh, approach those types of situations. Tough question, John, that, that quite often comes up, but that is that is the thing. You want to figure out where the areas uh, of pain are and kind of approach them in that situation. Hope that helps. Uh, if, you, if someone would like to uh, discuss that further, five Two five nine 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 seven two two, 9722 and we can have that uh, discussion. I'd be happy to call you back. Any other ones up there? Uh, We've got one more from one John. One more? Okay, another one from John. Any CE update? Yes, uh, they called. Well, I, I don't have an update yet, but I talked to the factory again yesterday, and, and they're following up every... It, it's, I don't know what to say, just the bureau, bureaucratic uh, who's on first, who's moving to second, who gets the, the next information. But that's, uh, I will call again this morning. I was I called yesterday hoping to have more information uh, for this morning, but uh, they assured me that, that they're calling every day now trying to get these folks to uh, send them the, uh, the, the simple little piece of paper that says, okay, start putting these stickers on your devices. Everything is past uh, all the muster uh, that, we're, that we're looking for. Thanks for asking, John, and I'll certainly, as soon as we have that, and, it, and again, it, it's just, it's right there. We've, we've, the factory has done everything that they were uh, requested to do. The, the devices that are CE uh, approved have all passed the safety inspections. We have the CE sticker that we're going to use. We have the CE numbers that, that are going to be used, but they had to do the factory uh, certification and as I've described in the past it used to be several years ago if they inspected the factories it was a half day ordeal and a quick thing and they could just I don't want to say rubber stamp it but it was just much quicker now the factory inspection is a two day a full two-day inspection and they get down to paperwork and 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 some studies that you've done and various information like that and so it just creates a stack of paper that needs to be referred to and what they typically do is they do that inspection and they send back to the factory these are the 10 points we'd like for you to address and once they're addressed then we will uh, give you the release to to proceed and all of that has been done and then we ran into a situation to where there is a fourth machine that it will be CE approved and it it's the uh, Vesta Duo uh, that we have and uh, it is still in safety approval so what the CE people were doing where they were saying well you're waiting for this machine to be approved even though these are good well when you get everything ready and we said no that's separate when that one's ready it'll be ready these three devices uh, are done they've passed safety inspection you've inspected the factory please issue the paperwork on that and they said oh okay we will and so now that's been a month month and a half and we're just waiting for that uh, little bit of tidbit of information to come through and go forward. The safety testing on the on the newer machine, the Vesta Duo, is going very well. So we look for that to be completed shortly and it'll just fall right into place uh, at that point in time because everything else is already completed with regard to the uh, CE uh, verification testing and certification. Um, any, I'll tell you what, we have a new camera today. Uh, we've upgraded our studio camera, and as I sit here and look at it, I'm kind of amazed. Uh, I feel like I'm on 4K. I can you know, see, the, see some of the, uh, the, the, the definition, if you will, uh, in, in my hairline uh, that I normally don't see with the uh, older camera that I've been using for, I don't know, seven or eight years now. Long time, small, not as good as this. This is a pretty neat camera. Uh, anyway, uh, kicking up our game on the videos and trying to make things uh, better for long-term viewing and, and so forth. Any other questions, uh, please give me a shout and we'd be happy to uh, uh, take a look at them. Uh, let's see here. Would like to appreciate uh, the proper setting to treat a ligament or tendon tear uh, injury in the stifle area of a horse. Now this same thing applies to a tendon or ligament tear uh, on a small animal or a person. The key is to have a comfortable setting. Uh, can you have some pulsing to the area? Yes, you can. It's, the question goes on to say, uh, should, this, should the pulsing movement might aggravate the tear further? And uh, over the years, that's not been an issue because we're not pulsing to the point that you're just moving something wildly crazy 
uh, to do. I'd be more concerned if you had a tear that you're going out athletically continuing to do what you're doing before it gets a chance to to heal and be in place that you could potentially aggravate the tear. But it's never been an issue uh, because typically there's not enough muscle. If you're talking about a tendon in a leg, there's not enough. Now in a human, it's a little different, but on a horse, if you're doing a tendon or a small animal, uh, there's not enough muscle tissue there to, call, to get a lot of reverberation, if you will, uh, from, the, uh, from the pulsing. So the, the higher intensity can just help keep the, the uh, blood flow to the area and the oxygenation to the area and the whole thing uh, to, be, to get rid of the pain and, and help with the the, uh, pain relief. So you certainly don't want it bouncing crazily, but is some little pulsing or it's going to pulse no matter what you're doing because it's a pulse signal. So it's going to put a pulse into it, but you're not wildly moving anything to where something could exacerbate a tear uh, at that point. Typically when we've had ACLs and MCLs in people, uh, we pulse comfortably. We pulse well enough to get good flow to the area immediately to, in order to get some immediate uh, pain relief uh, from the improved oxygenation of the blood and, and typically the healing process uh, because of the blood, better blood movement, blood, better blood oxygenation uh, is improved and you have a better, uh, faster healing type of process. Um, so, and the question goes on, uh, they're using the medium setting on the semi machine. Would that be too high um, for, uh, was the, for the muscle movement? No. Uh, and in many cases with the semi, if you're treating a tendon, you could use high. Um, again, the pulsing uh, should not be an issue. Talk to your vet. If the vet feels that, that, that you don't want to do that, then go medium and, and uh, type of setting in those situations. But uh, with the semi, you should not have uh, an issue with that uh, to the area. Energy is what we're trying to create. We want to create better energy or a good massive amount of energy into the area of the, of the difficulty with the animal or the person to, again, get better oxygenation, blood flow, and, and better sense of healing. Okay, let's see if we have, um, oh, well, there's a call. So let me do this. Let me go here. I don't know why my, I think I dis discussed that last week, is that it's ringing when I get a text instead of dinging, and so I want to do something. So here we go. Let's call this number here. It's Jen. And then we'll give Jen a call and see what's going on. Hello. Good morning. This is Pat Zemer. Hello, how are you? I'm good. What can I help you with today? Okay, so I am a new practitioner and I have um, um, a very close friend who uses laser and her husband is uh, a veterinarian. Okay. They have a horse um, that has come back from a lease that um, she has chronic laminitis um, and they wanted an acne wave. So I use. You're breaking up a little bit. Repeat that again. I see um, Zoom hook. So uh -huh. Zoom. Right. Both sides, like for each foot, 10 minutes. Okay. And now she is um, even more lame than when we started. And so they x-rayed it, and apparently she has abscesses um, in the hook wall. Um, and I'm just kind of trying to figure out what to tell her. Well, you want to tell her the reason that the horse was a little little more sensitive after you treat it, if there's abscesses, you're, you're taking away inflammation in the area, you're allowing the abscess to, to better do what it's trying to do, if you will, which can cause more pain. And when you're dealing with a severe laminitic type of thing, there's a lot going on there in those two hoofs that can, that can cause discomfort. So the key at this point is continuation. And, and and the key would be to I would go at a at initially at a very moderate type of setting because what we're really dealing with and trying to achieve is good oxygenation, good blood flow to the area. The oxygen into the area is going to help the healing process uh, uh, to help slow down the laminitis, if you will. Circulation is the key to that. If you have good circulation, you're going to have less, res less chance uh, of a laminitic type of situation 
to develop. And so obviously someone allowed that the horse to get into that type of situation. Now we have the abscesses. So I would certainly think uh, that the veterinarian is going to want to deal with the abscesses as well. So my response would be to treat at a, at a nice, comfortable type of setting. I would go maybe longer. Um, there's two ways to look at it. If we want to approach the abscesses, put it on the, on the uh, hoof pad, turn it up, and help move those abscesses out as quickly as possible to get rid of the pain caused and the discomfort caused by the abscesses and then let the continue the type of treatment to to get after it you know to to promote the healing from that point that point forward you're going to get a penetration of everything with the magna wave because it's going to penetrate the bone it's going to penetrate all the areas that maybe a laser would have difficulty getting to however to use a laser in concert with this uh, in in the areas that they can utilize it would be very beneficial and complementary but that would be my appeal a one-time treatment on a laminitic horse isn't going to do it and then when they x-rayed and found abscesses that are causing issues and pain this is one of those situations that that in in concert with the veterinarian you want to continue to work to hopefully get to in a in a as fast process as possible uh, help ease the uh, abscess issue and then uh, allow the healing to take place uh, with the laminitis certainly treating both feet is important I don't, are both feet laminitic Jen oh she's gone where'd she go let's try to redial um, I lost her. Let's redial it. Yeah, let me call it back. Okay. I don't know how we lost her. Sorry. <laughs> but we're getting it right back. Hello. Are you there? Well, it sounds like she might be on a cell, uh, and, and for, so I've got it. It says she's there, but I'm not hearing her. Um, okay, we'll try it one more time. Let's see if it's going to dial up. But my question became um, quite often, and when you get into those uh, situations of laminitis, if it's in one foot, a lot of times they'll treat that, and they, you need to be treating the other leg and the other foot at the same time. And also to that end, she's answered, but for some reason I'm not hearing her um, at all. I'm sorry, Jen. Um, I'll, try to I'll try to you on my cell phone to see if that comes through, just to make sure. Thank you. All right, let's, uh, let's go on. She's gone, so let's come here and call. Speaker. See if this gets her. Well, she's uh, answered again, but we're not getting her for some reason. So, Jen, I'm sorry. I uh, hope this is uh, answering your question. So, again, I would just simply stay with it. And uh, if the veterinarian has questions uh, and would like to talk with me or talk with uh, Aaron, our training person, or talk with other veterinarians that we have with us that deal with similar types of situations, we'd be happy to uh, put them in contact with those folks. That's exactly what we like to do. If someone has a question, a professional question, from a veterinarian, for example, we want to put them in contact, if necessary, with someone that has dealt specifically with that type of situation. I'm not a doctor, don't profess to be a doctor. Only thing I can give is experiences that we've had over the years and talk about the uh, concept of the blood improvement, the blood flow improvement, and how that is allows the body to be in a good situation to, uh, in, in effect, heal itself and, and move forward. Great question, Jen. Thanks for uh, getting with us. Support at magnawavepmf.com, and we'll get you some gear. Is there another question, yep. uh, Tony? Okay. Yep, we've got one from Jennifer. Okay. Hey, Jennifer, would HydroWave help with hind gut ulcers or PSSM? <clears throat> well, the, the, yes. I mean, 
in theory, the, the hydro wave is going to deal with areas, for example, as it flows through the bloodstream, if it gets to an area, which it will, it'll get to the area uh, of the body where there are ulcers and, and bacteria potentially helping to cause these ulcers and can hydro wave uh, um, attack that bacteria and help control that and, and, and set up a state for uh, better health. Yes, uh, the hydrowave can do that. There is other medication certainly for ulcers. So in concert with what's going on, to have that in the body to fight any bacteria that's there or any any place else could could be of, of benefit. But certainly uh, something whether it's stress or whatever is causing the ulcer uh, can be benefited uh, with many different things that you might be approaching. But in you know, the hydrowave, uh, as those of you who are familiar with it or not, it is a process through which they they put the water to where they put little tiny silver molecules, nano-sized uh, particles of silver, and then they run it through a process, and the oxygen that's in the water binds to the uh, little s molecules of silver. So when it's ingested, it moves into the bloodstream of the body, and it's negatively charged, so it looks for negatively charged uh, uh, bad bacteria, the oxygenated clusters uh, attack the bacteria and hopefully kill it or make it in a in a uh, less um, invasive manner if you will and uh, so that's the benefit there could that uh, go on to flow through and help uh, ulcer ulceritic type situations uh, potentially I would I would think so so uh, in many cases if you have a case like that a standard application uh, of some um, a hydrowave into a, one of the drinking uh, pails of the day uh, could be beneficial for a lot of things uh, with with horses or animals uh, uh, that or people uh, that we're that we're dealing with and so that's something to uh, consider there great question anything else come up at that point nothing yet okay so if you have any questions uh, simply put them in the chat box here and I'd be happy to uh, approach them it's 25 minutes till 10 we'll be here for another 20 minutes or so if the questions are coming uh, don't forget MagnaCon is coming up June 12 13th and 14th if you have questions you can call the office uh, and talk with them 502-742-7868 uh, 502-742-7868 to get your questions answered on MagnaCon it's going to be a great uh, few days uh, this this year we're going to break it up into we're going to have some, some basic training uh, type of things covered and we're going to get uh, more more deep or more deeply into some other areas of training uh, certainly dr. Marty will be with us we're going to have on Wednesday night a, a viewing of his new uh, film the dog doc will be Wednesday evening uh, at the conference uh, for those who are attending the conference or if you're in the area and you want to come there's limited seating but the uh, viewing will be free to those who just want to come to the viewing that evening Evening, or you can come for the day uh, Wednesday and and uh, see what's going on see the devices and experience magna wave and then see a great uh, documentary uh, film featuring dr. Marty Goldstein that was at the Tribeca Film Festival this year uh, at our MagnaCon event a lot of good activities and certainly we go to Churchill Downs to have an evening of enjoyment and racing at Churchill Downs on Thursday and then a, uh, a big activity on Friday night uh, with some dancing and camaraderie with the folks in attendance so it's just a good time to come and learn about PMF, learn about MagnaWave, get some good education. Uh, if you're a practitioner, come on down and, and uh, go to the speakers and let it apply to your continuing education uh, down the road for the future. So we look forward to uh, having a great weekend and uh, it's less than, uh, it's right at them. Well, let's see, it's less than a month away, about three and a half weeks away at this point. So. Uh, we're getting ready, so come join us uh, for MagnaWave this year, uh, Mag MagnaCon this year with MagnaWave, if you will. Let's see what else we've got here, if I have any other questions while we're waiting to see. Um, uh, there's somebody looking to share a room, twitching. Uh, working with a person that has Barrett's esophagus, is it uh, pre-cancer? It's a precancerous condition caused by acid reflux and GERD. They're having trouble swallowing. Is there a treatment plan for this individual? I have the Maya. Well, the, the, what they get in, in those types, and it's interesting, a couple of my family members have this type of situation where they need to go in and stretch the throat and, and try to relax the, the muscle area or the, the 
throat and the esophagus to so they can eat comfortably and and deal with that would a a treatment to the area help keep things more supple and and so they don't have as much as an issue with that potentially uh, again it's something um, to certainly check on and and follow up with uh, but it's it just to treat the the neck area and and to hopefully help that situation from some people have it I was told just the other day that there are people that have to go in and have this procedure the stretching procedure or whatever they do every month some people it's every four or five months or six months or once a year whatever the uh, uh, condition requires and and but you know it's certainly it's it's caused it's an anatomical type of uh, condition that's caused but we we've, we've learned if you have arthritic issues in your hands to where you have the tightness and you want it and you can loosen up the the tightness in your hands the more often you do it the the more supple things things are and and we have the same situation with with back issues or or whatever it may be so could it be beneficial to just keep things as supple as possible in that area I would think it would be something to look at and to potentially uh, explore okay um, uh, laryngeal laryng laryngy uh, hemiplasia or flappers uh, in horses uh, to where the the wind the the flaps on the on the windpipe uh, don't operate properly or they become paralyzed or start having issues uh, anyone have uh, uses for this or protocol the protocol in this case is to put it on the area and treat it there's many different ways you can place the coil to treat the esophagus and and the neck and uh, and certainly we've had situations over the years I know we had a racehorse oh, several years ago maybe 10 or 12 years ago that had an issue like this and uh, impaired breathing and it was a they get to different stages of paralysis and uh, this horse had about a stage two stage three type of issue and by treating it regularly we were able to keep it from getting any worse and so as long as we treated uh, prior to racing a couple of times the horse would breathe better breathe uh, more evenly certainly we treated the lungs so we had good breath good air going into the lungs uh, that they were dealing with and and overall the situation uh, was held at bay so yes we've had many people that have used this over the years now if you have a horse that's that's prone to having this situation because of the lineage or they know that it's there so quite often you can go in and treat it uh, as a as a precursor as or as a preventative measure to to deal with that and that kind of leads me uh, to the area of, of what's going on and how beneficial can this type of energy supplementation to the body be beneficial to the body and so if we come back and, and look at that type of situation we all want good blood flow we all need good oxygenation of our blood so in in, a, in Europe quite often these devices are used more as a preventative nature and to just keep things in good condition if you will so everything works right and, and oxygen is the key we have to have oxygen just like we have to have water you have to, and the, and the body is an electromagnetic uh, uh, device if you will a electromagnetic organism so to keep the the electromagnetic fields of the body and and the body working at its optimum is just simply something that that can better prepare you for good everyday health and wellness and so that's really that's what really happened to us in the beginning I mean I didn't go out and I wasn't going out to, to, to do something to change how a horse galloped or to change how it jumped or to do any of that kind of stuff I simply treated the horse and then they came back and said my goodness he's changing leads he's paying attention he's jumping smoother and, and it just but we I wasn't doing anything but treating the over body I, I didn't even treat ankles and knees and feet unless they said I'm having a problem with that the horse is having an issue then I treat those areas all we did was improve the oxygenation and the blood flow of the body and let that do everything else and and let it do that and so to take it and look at it from that type 
of situation is is something that that for health and wellness is a good way to approach it i didn't well, i wasn't thinking health and wellness at the time because everybody wanted treatments help my horse jump higher run faster do whatever i'm going to do this weekend uh ride smoothly on the trail ride whatever it was and, and but then as we got going and then people started saying is it going to help recovery yes well now let's let's use it to help my animal or my dog or me recover from my activity you know if i go work in the yard and get gardener's lament i come in and treat my knees or treat my back uh two or three times to get over that that uh, uh stress that i've that i've caused uh for the weekend and uh you have to do that, and but by utilizing this in that fashion is just a good, energizing supplement uh, for the body to allow everything else that you're doing right, your diet, your medication, whatever it may be, or man, if you want to get away from some medication, of course that's with you and your doc. But how you approach those type of things, keeping the body in as the cellular health of your body in an opportune, uh, in an, in an optim, optimized type of situation is really what we're hoping to do with this energy supplementation to the body with with PEMF therapy. Any questions, uh, put them in the chat box and we'd be happy to take a look at that. Is there a question? Yeah, we've got another one from John. Okay. Can someone with tinnitus use the large loop or on the semi device over their head resting on their shoulders? Yes. Most certainly. You can also take the uh, butterfly loop, John, and kind of hold it right to the side of the head and, and treat that area uh, for, the, for the tinnitus. I have a, you know, I keep, I keep telling you all my, own <laughs> all my own issues here, but I've dealt with tinnitus, uh, what I would call pretty severe uh, tinnitus for years, and I often treat myself uh, to try to continually uh, have it uh, in control. I mean, it's a ringing that's there that I, I wear a hearing aid to overcome the ringing that, that's in, in my ear. It's, it, like I said, it's, it's a pretty severe, um, it's not severe the words, painful, but it's there. If, I, if the ringing can overpower certain tones of, of what I hear, and so I wear a hearing aid to, uh, to help with that. But uh, in many cases, depending on the severity or the level of what they're dealing with, if you place the, the butterfly loop over the side of the head like this or right here, or put, the, put it on the shoulder and treat the whole head and ear situation, you're treating it. You know, if you're coming like this, you're treating the overall body to get as, as good a blood flow uh, to the area as possible. And uh, results vary, <laughs> but it certainly is uh, uh, something to, to take a look at. Great question, John. Um, any other questions at this point? Uh, nothing yet. Nothing yet. If you have a question, uh, please uh, put it in the uh, chat box and we'd be happy to take a look at it. By the way, the Association of PMF Professionals is up and running and uh, it's an organization where there's all kinds of research uh, in the AOPP for you to look at, studies, uh, current research from, from folks. It's a place you can go if you're a practitioner and uh, get yourself put on a map. Uh, uh, to show all the practitioners in the country where they may be and uh, so it doesn't make any difference uh, uh, who you're with or what you do. It, it, if you're a trained PMF professional with some form of, of training, you can certainly participate in the AOPP. The AOPP, is uh, their, their mission is to help bring standardization to the industry, uh, description of machines, description of power levels, to bring all of that into a more uh, level playing field to where everybody understands what's being presented because there's just a lot of different ways to present this and you want it needs to be presented in a manner that is understood and can cover all different levels of machines from the from the lowest power machine to up to potentially the highest power machine. They're going to have uh, uh, requests that, that companies submit their machines for uh, testing of Gauss delivery so we can have or so they can have so someone can go and understand what the real Gauss deliveries are uh, on the various machines and it also will serve as 
as, for example, uh, they're involved. There's some uh, things going on in the state of New York with the Racing uh, Commission. The AOPP is working uh, to help clarify that. And as a representative for those of us in the industry as professionals, whether you're a, a distributor or a manufacturer or a practitioner, the AOPP is a place that uh, you can just come together and have the support of everyone uh, in the industry. The industry has grown to the point that, that we feel that's why we're supporting this particular endeavor to help it uh, uh, be a self-regulating um, entity within the industry and can also be a lobbyist within the industry looking out for the practitioners and, and everyone that's uh, utilizing PMF equipment. So check out the AOPP. It's PEMFprofessionals.com and uh, to learn more and uh, to see what, what they're doing. Uh, you communicate with them, ask them questions or whatever the situation may be. Any other questions? At this point nope everything quiet all right so let's see if I've got any um, uh, here's a question anyone using c60 olive on dogs if so uh, what have they seen results potential client with an older golden retrieval that's arthritic and has had numerous surgery and vets wanting to do another arthroscopic uh, abrasion uh, she hasn't yet tried MagnaWay, but is going to speak with her this evening. Um, I would say that, that C60 is beneficial for general wellness in a person or an animal, um, uh, as, as it may be. It, it helps the telomeres be healthier, the, the, um, uh, the uh, genetic, the, what, what am I looking for? What word am I looking for? The genes. Uh, it helps the genes uh, of the body be healthier, have the length that they're supposed to have. The, um, the, the part of C60 kind of strengthens that aspect. Could that be beneficial for, for uh, an arthritic dog or, or whatever the situation may be? I would think it, it could be. I can tell you in, again, in my particular situation, I take C60 every day and I have now for the last three years. And when I started taking it, I went to my doctor six months after I, I, I do a physical twice a year. And I always have issues with my blood, with my triglycerides, and with the, the cholesterol and all this kind of stuff. And for the first time in years, I'm telling you, I'm seriously saying in years, my blood work came back very positive, very uh, in, in good shape. And my, my doctor was, was amazed. I discussed it with him, and so I've continued to do that. My wife experienced the same thing. Now, in this kind of situation where the dog has got a lot of arthritis stuff and they haven't tried MagnaWave, yeah, the C60 would be something to, to look at for the dog's overall health and wellness, but I would certainly look at using the MagnaWave to help relieve some of the, the issues of the arthritis uh, that the dog may be experiencing with good blood flow and oxygenation uh, of blood to the area. Uh, let's see if we've had any other questions here on the text. Um, okay. Uh, oh, she gave me a new number. I could do that. Uh, let me try Jen and see if we got her question answered um, here. Oh, no, that's not right. Uh, okay, in call. So it's, uh, let me get it up here. Okay, let's see if we can get Jen back on the phone and help see if she got all of her questions answered. But uh, use use the MagnaWave for the arthritis, and C60 should uh, could potentially be very beneficial. Let's see if she comes up here. This is Jennifer. Yes, ma'am. Did you get, did uh, we get <laughs> taken care of on your question? Oh God! Well, I was gonna rewind it because I now I I didn't get your answer. Oh, watch it later. okay. Uh, basically, what I was saying is certainly when you treat it one time and, the, the, and then they x-rayed and found the abscesses, basically what, what happens is if, if you're trying to free up the abscesses, uh, there can be some pain before total relief. So certainly multiple treatments to help clear up the abscesses would be very beneficial first. And then, of course, as you're doing that, you're going to help the laminitic type situation through. My question to you was, are both hooves laminitic? The, it is both hooves, and how she explained it to me, yeah, um, so how she explained it to me is that, because that's what I told her, I'm like, oh, we probably should do it more than once um, to relieve the pressure from the abscesses, but she was saying that it is be between the lamina and the hoof wall, uh, or the coffin joint, so it's, 
there's nowhere for the abscesses to go that the horse now the horse needs a hoof resection. Well, I mean, and, and if the veterinary if veterinarian believes that that it's only that it's going to be solved with a re, with a resection, then you know the veterinarian they they make the call and, and the person uh, does it. However, the 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 circulation improvement, the the flow of the blood from the area, if the abscess were to begin to break down and move into the to in, into the system of the body, it it's going to go somewhere. And okay. and and uh, I, I I can't I. I veterinarian question to it, it, whether or not it, it's stuck and it can't burst or it can't be relieved uh, without a Understand. resection. But, you know, if, if that's the case, then they need to do the resection, get rid of the abscesses, and then come back and, and stay on the laminitis. Continue to treat okay. the laminitis because that's a, that's a separate issue uh, and help that process with good oxygenation of blood flow move along. But if it's in both, then you need to be treating both. Um, in order to keep it from getting worse in one than the other. So is it better at a low power for a longer time? If you're not trying to get rid of the abscess, but you're trying to get good blood flow and oxygenation to the hoof, the answer would probably be yes. Put it on okay. a, a lower setting for a longer period of time. And, and that will create, that, that won't have, because if you're on a very high pulsing, what, you're try, what it's trying to do is pulse that abscess for it to burst. And, and to come out, but if there's no place for it to go, and 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 you just until they do the resection or whatever they're going to do, to simply have it at a low setting, providing energy to the area at a level to help the blood circulation in the rest of the hoof, would be beneficial to the laminitic situation because circulation is key there. Right. Okay. All right. Well, very good. Thank you so much for calling back. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Have a great day. You as well. Bye bye. Okay, so uh, there again, it's always important to, which I didn't get the first time, the vet feels like the, the uh, abscesses need to be uh, treated with a resection, and that's certainly what needs to happen. You don't want to do anything that the veterinarian uh, does not want to do. But here we're dealing with an uh, abscess and a um, um, laminitic, laminitic type situation. For those of you who are not familiar with that, it's basically where you have good solid tissue uh, in the body or in the foot, all of a sudden it starts to come, ac come apart. It's like uh, you've seen uh, paneling, wood paneling that's out in the rain and it separates, it, it, the lamination fails, and then the wood's not usable. Well, the same thing happens. If we can get good circulation all around these areas, it's just supporting supplying support to the body and can keep that that separation from getting worse potentially can help it with the with the flow come back together the way they want it to come why they the way they want it to be so you're dealing with in this case a couple of different things which kind of goes back to what we were talking about earlier with someone who's sore all over their body you treat their shoulder and now their low back is sore because their low back was sore to begin with so you got to put all this stuff together uh, that's where the doctors come into play and then we can use our our uh, energy to help aid the body as well. So, uh, any other questions come up there, Tony? Uh, nothing yet. Okay, we got another just a couple of minutes here. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, put them in the uh, chat box, and uh, we'd be happy to answer them. Uh, we do. I was going to talk a little bit about MagnaCon. Uh, Dr. Amanda Myers and uh, Verlinda Thompson will be with us again this year, and they have another great presentation they're going to make on uh, bone healing. Um, a young athlete, I believe it was, uh, had a fracture that was not healing at all and it was getting to be quite a problem and they wanted to do something about it and they were not having any success and they went and began to treat uh, with the MagnaWave and uh, over just a three week period of time and the doctor was blown away. They have x-rays to show uh, what they did and how it was applied that they're going to bring and have as part of the presentation uh, at MagnaCon. So if you're wanting to come, come join us. Uh, if you can't make it, everything will be recorded and you'll be able to uh, have a look at it and, and see what's, what's going on. So join us at MagnaWave. I want to thank you for being with us today. Uh, if you have any questions, save them up and we'll uh, take care of it next week. And uh, so this is Pat Ziemer saying wave on to better health. Have a great day and thanks for joining me. Bye-bye.